Hello everybody, my name is Professor Nara Chamberlain and I am the President of the Mathematical Association and welcome to the 17th edition of What is the Point of Mathematics? Now we are having a Black History Month special. So this is when we have actually recorded it. We've recorded this in October. Well, it may get released in November or December, but, we, but guess what? Black History Month should be all year round, so we don't mind. But certainly this is a Black History Month special and our special guest, we, we're actually going to be talking to a very own black hero of mathematics. So, Teresa, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Um, so hello everyone, my name is Teresa Senya. I am currently a product developer for maths qualifications level two and level three at Pearson, um, also known as Edexcel as well. Um, and I used to be a maths teacher and I was a head of department for a few years too. Thank you very much indeed. And, and she appeared in the Black Heroes of Mathematics conference in part it of the did. panel. They did. And I should have said that. <laughs> should have led with that one. <laughs> should have led with that one. Should have led with that one. And look out for next year. Guess who will be speaking next year for pointing that direction or that direction. There you go. So, Teresa, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And so the first question I'm asking you is, so what is the point of mathematics? Well, thank you very much for having me. What is the point of mathematics? Well, for me, I feel that maths is just the language that we put on what's already going on in the world. So maths is already happening everywhere, at every point and every turn in your life. Um, and we use um, our tools of mathematics to describe what's going on and how we can communicate what's going on with each other. Um, so the point of mathematics to me is putting a language on the things that are already happening. And as we discover new parts of mathematics, um, especially if you're a part of research or, you know, finding out new theorems and things like that, there are things that are already there, they're already happening. It's just a way that we can use language to present. Um, that's what I consider mathematics to be. So a language to, pre to present and describe already going on. Yeah. what is already going on. Very, very, very good. So now you've recently took part in the Black Heroes of Mathematics um, Conference, Black Heroes of Mathematics Conference. Um, so what was uh, your take home from, you know, taking part in, in that conference? Well, for me, I loved the conference um, and I really felt that it was very inspiring to understand and learn what people are really doing, you know, kind of behind closed doors or things that you might not necessarily know what's happening. Um, I'm, I really enjoyed the speakers, but I especially enjoyed being a part of the panel because I was learning about lots of different things that people were doing and how they affect what's going on in the UK, what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, I think that some of the research that's being done and some of the work that's being done are things that aren't necessarily what you come across in everyday life, but what they're doing is enabling you to get around your everyday life. So it's really amazing to kind of see what people are doing behind the scenes um, and kind of shining a light on that work. And that's what I really found very inspiring about it. And I think as well, um, as I was a teacher, something that I thought about was if I knew more then about, you know, the different things that ma black mathematicians were doing, then it would be something that I'd be able to bring into the classroom as well. It's really amazing to have tangible examples of people doing incredible work and it just shows that, oh, I can actually do that. I can aspire to be, you know, um, a mathematician. I can aspire to work all my way up and get my PhD and continue in research because I can see people are doing it. And I think that if we can shine a light on those things and really elevate people who are already doing incredible work, that's a way that we can really get younger people as well to see that as an option for themselves. And that's what I thought was the best part about being a part of the conference. Okay, and uh, we certainly uh, will look forward to to you possibly doing a talk talk next year. You know, so uh, you're not going to give us no clues of what you will be talking about. No, tightly no. at your time. <laughs> oh well, thank you very much indeed. We'll have to keep that very very secret. So we have to wait until next year. Very very good. So, so would you, in your opinion, you saying that actually role modeling is 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 very important? Would you like to expand on that? Well, I think that when you can see people doing things that look like you, it doesn't make it feel as if it's too unattainable. It's like, oh, actually, I could do that because I can see someone doing it. And I think that what sometimes happens, I think you um, 
had spoken before about potentially a teacher telling you, you know, you could potentially be a boxer. Um, I've had some people kind of say, oh, I didn't expect you to do maths. I could see you doing something else. And I think some of those comments come from seeing someone who, oh, I've seen someone else do that. So that's, that, that makes sense that you would also be able to go down that path as well. Like I can see that being a path of success for you. I haven't seen someone like you who looks like you doing what you're trying to do in this field over here. Um, and I think that if there is people who are there, and they are there, <laughs> you know, they, they do exist. It's not that there's no black mathematicians. There are loads of black mathematicians across the world doing incredible work. It's just, if you can see them, then it's like, oh, I can do that because I can see someone doing it. Um, and even if it's just one or two people that, you know, you're like, oh, actually, I can see that trajectory. And it's not to say that if they're not there, you can't do it. It's just it makes it feel like it's more tangible. It doesn't feel like you're having to push through the barrier because the barrier has already been pushed through and you can kind of just squeeze your way through and be happy that people have already kind of made that progress for you. And then you can take advantage of those steps as well. Um, but it does really come down to not only people yourself but also people who are advising you if they can they've seen people do it it's like oh yeah of course you can have a go at that and they kind of guide you in that direction and then if people haven't seen people doing it it makes it more difficult to imagine that um that for you and imagine that uh, as other people are looking at you as well imagine that for you too so it's very much about having a strong um presence and um highlighting what people are doing so that it makes it more tangible of an achievement and a goal so you you heard it here first and you heard it Teresa has just said it there are loads of black mathematicians all around the world doing incredible stuff yes it, I did say that she said it I can point that way point that way she said it there we go right we're going to go uh, a bit on to let's say um, math teachers I'm going to ask you the final question about mathematics teachers so in your opinion what makes a great mathematics teacher it's a very good question. Um, for me, I think there's this kind of two parts, like what makes a great math, math like teacher and then a great mathematics teacher. And I've got kind of two different, um, that they both coincide. I think to be a great teacher, first of all, you need to make sure that you are yourself. There are some absolutely phenomenal teachers who um, have lots of different ways of teaching and really leaning into that makes it feel more authentic for the students so that they start to feel like they can trust you a little bit more. If you're someone who, you know, is not authoritative in any way, then you don't have to be um, as just because you're a teacher. Go with what your personality drives through and that will make it much easier for you to connect and re have relationships with students. That's what I would say. And then being a great mathematics teacher, the most important thing is giving students a space to fail. Um, I think about myself when I was studying maths and like, what was the reason why I continued? Did I get everything right all the time? Was I always 100%? The answer is no. And um, I enjoyed a lot of success, but it wasn't that every single thing that I did, I was successful at. What was it that made me continue to go? And it was always something inside me that I knew that if I kept on trying, I would eventually get it because I had confidence in my mathematical ability. So how do you create that confidence? You could create that confidence because I was allowed a space to make mistakes. I was allowed a space to fail, but then to fail and then to succeed afterwards. Mathematics doesn't work without failure. You have to fail at something at some point somewhere, no matter how good you are. Um, and there are some really incredibly talented mathematicians, but there's going to be a point, whether it's doing your GCSEs, doing your A-levels, maybe it's in your first year of university, maybe you don't feel it until your master's, but there's going to be a point where you're not going to be able to work something out straight away. There's going to be a point where you're going to have to really figure out, okay, I can't go down route A, I'm not quite getting through, I need to go through route B or route C or route D. Sometimes it, it's a few different routes that you have to take in order to get to the answer. And that for me is the fun of it. It's about finding out what the routes are. It's not necessarily about getting there as quickly as possible, but it's finding the best route for you. And if you can create an environment in which the students are open and free to fail um, and that you're supportive in that failure in order for them to succeed later, that is invaluable. Um, if you've got students who maybe um, they're not as high attainers, um, it doesn't mean that they can't love maths. To me, maths is for everyone. You can always access it at different points. And if you've got students who, you know, maybe they're not getting 
some of the higher grades. It doesn't mean that you can't make it enjoyable for them. They might have some more interesting questions. Miss, I don't understand. Why would you have to plus two to one side and plus two to the other side? What happens there? Like, what's the reason? And that gives you an opportunity to say, okay, well, let's try it and see. Because you want to take away and plus, and I'm telling you, you've got to do the same thing to both sides. So if we do your way, let's see how it works. Show them, let them fail, and then let's explain exactly. All right, so that was a really great idea that you had, but here's the way that we can make it work in what we're trying to do at the moment. And it's just giving them a space to ask questions, not be afraid to ask questions. It shouldn't be, you know, math teacher lays down the law and then that's it and nothing else can happen afterwards. It's got to be a, an open communication. And that's really where it links back to the first point is if you're authentic in your teaching, you can create those relationships and it's all about trust. Um, sometimes students may come in with a pre-existing notion that math is difficult, math is hard, and it might not have anything to do with what they've actually done, but it's just what they've been told. So it's about if they get into the classroom, you know, what can we do in order to make them feel confident and safe that they can make mistakes, they can get things wrong. Maybe you make a few mistakes as well. I've, I've done that. You know, you're writing on the board. Um, you have meant to write 2x and you've written a 3x by accident. And if the kids are paying attention, miss. It was meant to be, it was meant to be a two. And then you know they're paying attention, you know that they're listening, they're communicating, but also there's a relationship where they feel comfortable enough to ask you questions, double check, they're really engaged in what you're doing. And I think that's really important. So yeah, be authentic, be yourself, but also give students a space so that they feel comfortable and confident to fail and then they will succeed. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, you know. So, it's a long answer. Your long answer, <laughs> loads of take, take homes there, loads of take homes there. Give them the environment to to, to uh, the, the space to to fail, but the support to, to succeed. You know, that's yeah, that's the that's a that's a very good point. Well, I'd like to thank you very much indeed, uh, Teresa. So this was uh, um Teresa, you know, black hero of mathematics, amongst other things that she do, that she does, <laughs> but I just want to point that point out in, in there. And we look forward to seeing you come next week next year, seeing what you're gonna talk about. I know you're keeping it very strong, but uh, you, you got a whole <laughs> you got a whole year to prepare. Cool. And so this that concludes the 70th edition of what is the point of mathematics? My name is Professor Nora Chairman, I'm president of the Mathematical Association. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'm looking forward to speak to you in the next edition. Thank you and goodbye.